Hello and welcome to another video and today I'm out on the gorgeous 2023 Triumph Street Triple R. So we finally have some dry weather, it's been raining for like a month so I decided to take this bad boy out for a spin but we can do some Basics, we've got a 765cc inline triple, making 118 horsepower. We've got these new looks. It's definitely the sharpest street triple they've ever made. We've got big piston forks. We've got this gorgeous gullwing swing arm. We've got a new exhaust system. We've got lots of internal changes in the engine and uh, some new electronics as well. Let's just power it up and have a look at that dash. And uh, a new dash as well. And those of you who know the uh, Trident or the Tiger Sport 660 will recognise that dash because it's the same dash and also the same switch gear. So let's start her up. She sounds pretty good. Right, let's throw a leg over and see how she feels under buttock. <laughs> I'm on the balls of my feet, I can't quite flat foot it. We have an 826 millimeter seat height as standard, but you can get a low seat height, which takes it down to 798 millimeters if you are short of leg. So the Street Triple actually came out in 2007. Yeah, so 2007 is when the uh, Street Triple first launched. And I remember that because I actually put a deposit down on one, but uh, got made redundant <laughs> shortly after. So I had to cancel it. and. What did I have at the time? A Honda Hornet 600. But anyway, alas, I'm digressing quite a bit. <laughs> Ooh, I think my seat... I think... Yes, the seat has come undone. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you uh, want to make sure that's done up. But however, I can show you the USB. So we have a USB socket just there. Just got this handy little flap. Bit of flappage. Hopefully that doesn't fly off. So there's actually quite a lot to talk about, about the... <laughs> the new street triple because there have been quite quite a few changes Whoa. it's making 118 horsepower at 11,500 rpm 80 newton meters of torque at I think it's nine and a half thousand rpm so more power and more torque than last year's model We've got Brembo M4.32 calipers up front. We've got Showa big piston separate function suspension at the front, fully adjustable. And at the rear, we've got a Showa piggyback monoshock. Again, fully adjustable, so rebound compression and damping. We have a gorgeous chassis. We have some sharper looks. We have some new electronics. It's got an IMU this time. It's got a quick shifter as standard as well. So let's first talk about the engine because Triumph have learned a lot from their Moto2 program. So we've got new valves, new camshaft, we've got new pistons, new conrods. That means higher combustion ratios, more efficient combustion chamber, a new balance of gear, as well as closer gear ratios, just making it a little bit more snappy, accelerating. And talking about uh, the power and the torque, it actually makes, not only does it make a little bit more power and torque, but it makes more power and more torque across a wider range of the rev range. So all really good tangible changes, not just spec sheet stuff. I can feel that this bike has got a bit more, a bit more zazz to it. Power wheelies in second gear <laughs> certainly do add to the excitement. The chassis weighs 189 kilos. I've already mentioned the seat height, but I'll mention it again, it's 826 mil. It does feel a bit smoother lowering the RPM and that's what Triumph say is they've smoothed out the throttle response from all the way at the bottom of the RPM and it makes a little bit more power through the, to the top as well. <laughs> power wheelie! <laughs> and you've got that, of course, that lovely agile, agile chassis which Triumph Street Triples are renowned for and this is no different. You've still got that separate subframe as well and the machine components on this bike are absolutely beautiful. The build quality is really high. This has got a brand new ABS modulator which has a built-in IMU. So for this year we have cornering ABS and traction control as standard which is quite something. 
on the sort of lower spec model of the Street Triple. To have that is, is really good value, I think. It has ABS, of course, but it also has linked braking. So when you, when you do slam on the anchors, it does initiate the rear brake a little bit as well. And that's just to help stabilize the bike and also improve braking performance. That quick shifter is absolutely delicious. It's so smooth. Triumph quick shifters on their triples. <laughs> it's just uh, absolutely wonderful. They are so smooth. Now this road is really, really bumpy. So just getting away from the electronics for a second. This road is horrible. But the uh, show of big piston shocks and monoshock doing a really decent job. It's you can tell it's sporty, like it's firm, but it's also really plush. It's not, so like the low speed damping, sorry, the high speed damping is actually pretty good. Uh, in fact, both low and high speed damping is pretty good. So suspension for real world use for the road, I think is, is really sublime. <laughs> yeah, so I don't care what you say, this bike feels so much peppier than the previous generation. Absolutely fantastic. Oh my god, power wheelie over a crest. Braking, we have those Brembo 4 piston calipers. They are radial mounted, 310mm discs. They are the M432s. They are not the style levers that are on the RS, but that doesn't matter because they are absolutely fantastic for the road. Plenty of feel, plenty of feedback, lots of power. All really, really good. And the rear brake, not too bad either. Had the ABS kicking there a little bit, but these roads are not the best, not in the best condition. Let's test the brakes. Oh yeah, they are really good. My nuts, oh, my nuts just took a bit of a pounding. Not for the first time. <laughs> As I was saying, we have an IMU, which means lean sensitive ABS. We have lean sensitive traction control. We have four riding modes this time around. We have rain, road, sport, and for the first time ever, we have a user configurable mode, which is awesome. Oh, 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 that is so addictive. Yeah, so in those riding modes, each riding mode has a particular throttle map assigned to it, but you can, of course, change things independently. ABS, you cannot turn off. You can disable traction control. However, excuse the bumps, turning the bike off and on does re-enable the traction control, which is a bit of a shame, but I do understand it's a little bit of a safety feature. <laughs> In rain mode, it does limit the power to 100 PS, which is around 90 something horsepower. But it's good to know that you've got options. You can change stuff as you see fit. And the ABS is set at either on or on. <laughs> There are no other options. Oh, for crying out loud. Uh, this year, the bike has a smaller fuel tank. And here's my house. <laughs> oh dear. So this costs 9,595. You have two colors, this nice silver. And actually, you might think silver's boring, but the, the flake on this is absolutely gorgeous. To the point where I think this might be my favorite color out of all the other colors you can get, even the red and the yellow. And you've got these nice little fluo accents on a couple of places which I really like. There are your Brembo M432 calipers, your big piston shower upside down forks, 41 millimeter, fully adjustable. We have Continental Conti Road tires. So these are good in all sorts of weathers, both wet and dry. There's the, the nosy snout of this beast. And these two, that is your air intake, which is why you get such a lovely induction noise because it's right underneath the rider. New sort of headlight finisher. You've got new side cowls, radiator, cowl. The tank is 2.4 litres smaller, I think, but you've got these integrated side panels. It just looks so much sleeker, I think, whereas the other tank was quite big. And it makes it a, a bit nicer to ride because your legs aren't so splayed out. I know some of you might like legs akimbo, but <laughs> I don't. LED lights all round as well. I didn't say that. Uh, Self-cancelling indicators are standard as well. So and there's the beating heart of the machine, the Moto2 derived 765cc N9 triple. 118 horsepower, 80 newton meters of torque. We have a brand new exhaust system, freer flowing, a new silencer as well to give that nice triple howl. And I think it sounds really good, a standard. I'm not even sure I'd get an aftermarket exhaust for this, to be honest. Beautiful subframe, bolt on subframe. 
And even like these little bolts, they're all finished to such a high standard. And the foot pegs and the brake lever, Triumph really have nailed the build quality on this. There's your gold wing swing arm, piggyback monoshock there, braided hoses all around as well, standard. Single piston Brembo caliper at the rear. Uh, the wheels are cast spoked wheels, so they're nice lightweight wheels, just adding to the uh, unsprung weight of the machine, which helps agility. There's the quick shifter. And as I said, one of the best quick shifters I've ever used. And there is the dash. There's loads of optional accessories for this bike. You've got cruise control if you want it. You've got your heated grips. You've got the My Triumph connectivity package. Now this versus the RS, this has got about 10 horsepower less. It's one kilogram heavier. It doesn't have your Stylemas. The RS has Stylema brakes. The RS also has a Olin's rear shock, STX40 I believe, and it has a different uh, dash. That is 11,300 quid. So for nine and a half thousand or just over, I think this is a bit of a bargain for the performance, which is, you know, it's almost the same. And the RS also has the belly panel standard, which I don't even think you can get as an option for this, which is a bit of a shame. So the bars are 12 millimeters wider, so you get a little bit more leverage, improving turning. On initial inspection, I felt the seat was quite hard, but actually when you do any kind of length of time on the bike, it's okay. I feel surprised by that, but uh, at this point I really shouldn't be because Triumphs generally are pretty comfortable machines. You are leant forward a little bit, but uh, once you get going, it does, the wind does push you back. Obviously at high speeds, you're gonna get wind blast, but it's clean air, the usual situation. Ergonomically, I find the bike very comfortable, especially considering it's a sporty naked. Quite a nice little area. And golf, look, you can play some golf. I used to play golf actually, and then I realized it was uh, just a really annoying game. <laughs> but looking at the spec sheet, everything looks like it makes its power and it's torque really high up. But let me tell you, when you actually get on the thing and open the throttle, it is very fun from low down in the RPMs. And the quick shifter is also really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everything is just flipping fantastic. So the engine, the chassis, the brakes, suspension. Oh, <laughs> what a bike. So, would I choose the RS or would I choose the R? Now that's a tricky question because there are bits of the RS that I like, such as the Stylemas, but if I'm being really honest, I can't tell the difference in performance between the two. Perhaps if I was to ride them back to back, I could then tell you, oh yeah, the RS is a bit, a bit sharper, a bit more on the nose, because you are jacked up a bit more on the RS. The seat height is 10 mil higher, so it is a bit more newsy. But honestly, I think I'd probably just buy the R and get a few little extras such as heated grips and still be, I might even get cruise control and still be way cheaper than the, uh, the cost of the RS. Now the only thing I do like about the RS is the, uh, the belly pan and the colours, which are nice. I do like that yellow, that yellow looks flipping lovely. But as I said earlier, yeah, this silver in the sun is absolutely wonderful. It really pops and it's got this lovely metal flake to it, which you just can't see in pictures. And for the asking price of £9,595, I don't think you're going to do much better than this. So let's talk about competition. The competition for this would be the uh, 890 Duke car, the MT-09. Those are probably the main competitors for this Street Triple R but I've not yet ridden the 890R. So I'll have to do that at some point and report back. <laughs> oh, what a bike. Oh, slipping assist clutch as well. I've probably forgotten loads of other stuff, but anyway, I'm just having fun. So coherent, <laughs> I'm gonna try and do a coherent summary then. Engine, absolutely smooth smooth delivery of power plenty more grunt than last year's model it power wheelies in first second and third over crests which is just hilariously fun the uh, chassis and handling is you know as you would expect from a street triple it's absolutely spot on sharp agile handling turns direction ridiculously fast yeah, it's just absolutely brilliant, basically. 
really impressive brakes, plenty of feel, plenty of power. And uh, you've now got really decent electronics as well, that IMU linked braking system, the quick shifter is standard as well. It's just flipping fantastic. Let me throw more superlatives at it. I am super impressed with this bike, if you can't tell, and I want one. I want one right now. Would I trade my SV650 for one in a heartbeat? Yes, I would. <laughs> Is it better than something like a Hornet or a GSX 8S? Well, you've got to look at the price difference. This is over nine and a half thousand and those bikes are quite a bit cheaper. But yes, this bike is better than both of those if we're just talking about like for like comparison. But then it should be, it really should be. Servicing is every 6,000 miles or 12 months, whichever comes first. And I believe it's a three year unlimited mileage warranty. I think that will just about cover this video. If you haven't guessed, I've really loved this bike and it's a bike I really want to own. So watch this space. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. If you do go out today, do ride safely, watch out for cyclists, but have fun of course, otherwise what is the point? And until next time, you take care of yourselves and peace.